Welcome to Niche Site Duel 2.0, video number one. This is keyword research and SEO competition analysis. Let's get right to it. Keyword research, SEO analysis, and all the other criteria we're going to talk about today. I mean, this is the most important part of this entire process because everything we do from this point forward, from selecting the URL, from determining what content to publish and who to reach out to, it's all based on the niche that we select to get into. So the goal here is to find a keyword that meets a specific set of criteria that gives us the okay that we could build a website for it, meaning that we know we have a good chance of ranking high in Google, getting traffic coming to the site, and earning an income from it. Now, the approach that I want you to take is, from this point forward, and I really want you to think about this, is that as we select our keyword, and as we start to determine what niche we're gonna get into, that we are going into it knowing that we are going to build a website that is gonna become an incredibly valuable resource that serves that particular market. We are going into it building the ultimate resource for that niche. So I have a specific set of criteria that I'm gonna follow for this. You can choose to follow this if you want, or you can create one of your own, it's up to you. But this is what I'm going for. The first thing is I'm shooting for a keyword that gets at least, at least 3,000 local exact match searches per month in Google. Again, that's, that's the bare minimum. I would love to shoot for something higher, but that's bare minimum, something that's gonna get me a decent amount of traffic per month if I were to rank number one. Now, there's a lot of other factors involved, such as the following. I also want relatively low competition in Google. This means that there seems to be room in the top 10 spots on the first page of Google. And I'm gonna go into that when I actually do the demonstrations for you later in this video. All right, number three, does it pass the grandma test? Meaning if I were to become incredibly famous for having the number one website in this particular niche that I get into, uh, whatever it ends up being, would my grandma be proud of me or would she kind of be embarrassed? Or should I even tell her? You know, if she'd be proud of me, then it might be something I might get into. Number four, what is the earning potential? This is something a lot of people miss. You know, they find a keyword that meets all the criteria, but mm, it's not gonna make them a lot of money. Um, we wanna make some money, of course, and there's some tests you can run to make sure that that's gonna happen. All right, number five, the 50 post test. Is this a particular niche I can get into and imagine myself writing 50 posts for? If it seems like it would be a drag or it would be hard to come up with 50 posts, then I might think of something else. What the 50 post test does is it shows me that there's a lot of content here, which allows me to potentially get a lot of traffic from long tail keywords in that particular niche. Number six, can I imagine myself writing or is it even possible to create a beastly resource for this particular niche a really in-depth high quality post that I can use to sort of get buzz for my niche and, and, and get eyeballs on my brand? And lastly, can I actually help people in this particular niche? Maybe it's not through my skill, or experience, although that would obviously help. Um, maybe it's through research and curation of content to meet and fill a specific need that people have in that particular niche. All right, so to help you understand how keyword research works, I want you to think about it like you're painting for gold. You know, the big nuggets are already taken. People found them already, but there is gold that lies within. You just gotta put in the work. You gotta sift through all that dirt, all the pebble, and all the rock and do the work. And that's what the keyword research tools are for. And there are free tools and paid tools, which I'm gonna show you later. But there's a big key thing you have to realize. The more dirt you get through, the more chances you have of finding these golden keywords. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't a pan for gold. It, this is just the, a bowl with ridges that sort of look like it, but not really. Now, if this is your first time doing keyword research, you have to sign up for a few things first before you can start using these tools. And the first one you wanna sign up for is for Google AdWords. That's adwords.google.com. Now, why do you need to sign up for Google AdWords? Well, this gives you access to the Google AdWords keyword research tool. You can use it without signing up, but then you gotta fill out a capture form like every time you use it, and you can only get up to 100 related keywords for every seed keyword that you put in make sure you sign up because you can get up to 800 related keywords and you can skip the capture process when you're signed in. And even if you're using some keyword research software like Longtail Pro or Market Samurai or some other ones, you still wanna sign up for Google AdWords because that software to get those 800 related to keywords since that software uses the data from Google AdWords keyword research tool. So make sure you sign up for Google AdWords. 
Okay, the next thing you want to do is head on over to seomoz.org, seomoz.org. A free account there will work, or they have an upgrade to a pro account if you want in the future, just to keep in mind. And what this does is it will give you access to things like Open Site Explorer, so you can check the backlinks for your site and competitor sites too. And also, you'll get to see the Moz rank for each of the competitor sites, which is uh, an indication similar to Google Page Rank that will tell you how authoritative a site is. And many say it's even better and more accurate than Google PageRank. Okay, and lastly, head on over to semrush.com, semrush.com. This is a great site. It'll give you some good, free, quick analytical data for specific keywords that you might be interested in and also competitors' websites. Okay, so I'm going to do keyword research right here for you right now, first using free tools. And this is going to show you exactly how all of this works. And it's important, even if you're using paid software, that you watch and understand because you don't want to use those tools and trust them without knowing exactly what's happening. So the first step always is to find a seed keyword or seed keywords. And this is what you enter into the Google AdWords keyword tool or some of your paid software. And when you submit that word, you get up to 800 other related keywords that will show the data along with them, such as search volume, average cost per click, and things like that. So the question is, where do you get your seed keywords? I'm not going to go over that right here, right now, but I am going to link to another video on how to do that if you're having trouble. It's called Seven Methods to Help You Dig Deeper with Keyword Research, and I'll embed that here on the YouTube uh, video, and I'll put it in the description as well. Or if you're watching this on the blog right now, I'll put a link to it right below this video. So to start, I'm going to find some seed keywords, and there's a number of different ways to do this, like I said. Uh, one of the things I like to do is sort of to try and discover trends and put those words into here and see what see what I get. And Google has a tool called Google Trends, which is fairly good for finding trends, although a lot of the keywords that are shown there, a lot of the trending keywords are celebrity related or current event or news related, which are hard to build websites for. I like to go to a site called Indeed.com. This is a job search site, and they actually have a link here at the bottom for trends in job search which is really uh, interesting. And so you can see here the top job trend is HTML5 and a lot of other software related things. I like to click on industry employment trends here on the left hand side. It's going to show me by sector sort of what is uh, going on. And this is, as you can see, uh, hospitality here is up 25% from last year, which is interesting. So I'm going to click on that. And here is uh, where you can find some really good seed keywords. If you go uh, scroll down a little and you find top job titles, I mean, look at these here, housekeeper custodian, front desk clerk, bartender, server, cook. These are words that are definitely going to be too hard to rank for, but they're perfect seed keywords because those tools are going to show us related keywords to these that might have some potential to build a website for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these and just plop them right now into Google AdWords. So I'm going to use uh, housekeeper. Uh, what was another one? Bartender, uh, cook, uh, was janitor. And you can put a several seed keywords there, but I'm just going to use those for now. Next, I'm going to create some filters. And what this does is it sort of gets rid of the keywords that don't meet my criteria already. Now, I had mentioned earlier in the video, I want local monthly searches greater than 3,000. Now, you're also going to find a lot of keywords here that are going to show you, you know, hundreds of thousands of local searches. Those are typically going to be too competitive as well. So I'm going to put local monthly searches less than, um, you know, six figures, so 100,000. I also want the last one, I want approximate CPC or cost per click. That's how much advertisers are paying every time someone clicks on an ad, not how much you make every time someone clicks on an ad. Uh, I want that to be at least above a dollar. That's going to show me that there's some sort of money flowing in that particular niche. So the last thing and the most important thing to do before you hit the search button, again, the most important thing on the left hand side here, it says match types. You want to set it to exact. If you set it to broad, it's going to show you numbers that are way too big and skewed and, and aren't true to exactly what's going on. So you want to make sure you have it on exact match or else you're going to get screwed up. And from there, you can click on search and a number of keyword ideas are going to show up underneath. There's two columns here. Actually, they're beta testing this thing called ad group ideas, which takes that group of keywords and puts them into different sort of categories, which is actually pretty interesting. Or you can get the traditional sort of long list here of uh, exact match searches uh, related to the keywords that you put in. Um, and you can see a lot of data here. So I'm just going to stay on this page right here. This is the keyword here on the left hand side. The next column is called competition. Do not confuse this with SEO or search engine optimization competition. That has, this, this is 
advertiser bids. competition to so bid for these particular keywords. This is just between advertisers, so don't be confused. And actually, high is actually a better um, they, uh, high is better than low because that means there's different advertisers competing. Uh, next is global monthly searches, then local monthly searches. Again, we wanted this above 3,000, and there's plenty here above 3,000. And then approximate CPC or cost per click. And all of these are above a dollar because we set that filter. Now, at this point, what you want to do is, if you're doing this the free method, you want to take each of these keywords one by one and explore them. You want to see, you know, they've meet the criteria so far. They meet our, they've met our search volume criteria. Now we have to see if they meet some of the other criteria. And you can immediately do the ones that we talked about earlier, such as the grandma test or uh, whether you feel like you can write 50 posts for that particular niche. I mean, I don't know if I could write 50 posts on janitorial supplies, or I might not be interested in that, or maybe my grandma wouldn't approve. So I wouldn't even need to do research on that one. But if there are ones here that I might be interested in, I want to explore those further. So uh, bartender game, that sounds kind of interesting. So I can do some research on that right now. And one of the first things to do after you've met this criteria and you want to search further is just to simply type the keyword into Google and see what pops up and see if anything sort of stands out at you right away. So I'm going to put bartender game and see what comes up. And right now, immediately, I can see that there are no ads here. Typically, there would be ads here on the top of the uh, search results page and also on the right-hand side. The fact that there are none is sort of a red flag that this may not be a good money keyword. It may be something that is not that competitive, but also you want to make sure that there's a potential to earn an income. Now, it's not just the fact that there's no ads here doesn't mean that you shouldn't you know, dig deeper to see if there's any sort of money involved. You want to see if there are any products or affiliate programs that you could potentially be associated with before you just immediately scratch this. So that's what we're going to do here, um, since that's the sort of first thing that stood out at me right away. Um, and to check that, to check the earnings potential, some other tests that you can run is you can put quotations around your keyword if it's more than two words, uh, or if it's more than one word, or if it's at least two words, and then type in a money related keyword or transaction related keyword, for instance, price. Um, so I have bartender game price. And what this does is it shows me sort of what products are out there that are being sold related to this particular uh, keyword. And I could see a few things like an iPhone app game. Um, this one seems to be an Android app game. And here's something on Amazon. It's called the bartender game. It's a toy of some kind, maybe a board game. Um, there isn't really that many things that are very attractive right to me off the bat. Um, and a couple other words you can put in are affiliate to see if there's any affiliate programs that you could potentially join. Look through the descriptions and look for bolded keywords that say affiliate in there. I see one here under Amazon.com for that same bartender toy or game or whatever it is. Um, and yes, you can sign up for Amazon and become an affiliate through their Amazon Associates program and potentially sell this, uh, whatever it may be. But is that something you want to be, is that something you want to potentially sell on your website? Is that something you're going to be happy with? Um, can you imagine yourself doing that or writing a number of articles about that? For me, I would say no, but there's a few more things I want to do with Bartender Game really quick before I move on and try another keyword and then start to use some of these tools. Um, but again, immediately I would just move on to the next one at this point. Um, it doesn't seem to be a money keyword is, 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 the, uh, is the thing. And also it just doesn't seem that attractive. So I'm going to type in Bartender Game again and show you some other things that you should look out for. When you type in a keyword in Google, the keywords that you typed in are bolded. So those are things to look out for. If you, if, if you look and see sort of how often people are using bartender game in the description and also in the title, that's a good uh, indicator whether or not um, you know, it's gonna be very competitive. If not very many people are using those keywords in the title and also the domain and also the description, then that's a good sign because you can sort of take advantage of the fact that they're not usually utilizing on-page SEO. Now, other things you want to pay attention to are just what kind of brands are here. What are they selling or what are they doing? Um, a lot of these seem to be free online games or flash games. And again, this is something, you know, you would have to create something better than what's already here in order to get to the top 10. So you'd have to create some sort of, it seems like you, uh, some great resource about bartender games. And again, that's just a, a, a sign that this isn't something that I would really want to get into. Um, so I'm actually going to move on to another keyword, go back to Google AdWords here and see if we can find anything interesting. Um, here's one bartending school. This one stands out to me because anything that deals with school or education or studying or things like that, I know from experience that people will, are willing to pay money for, their, for information and are looking really hard for good information about that type of stuff. So bartending school seems pretty interesting. It has a 
you know, rather large number of exact, uh, exact local searches um, and also uh, 